Well, welcome back to DXB Today, where tonight it's all about that newfangled technology known as AI. But when do we know if it's real and when do we know it's fake? Let me ask you a question. Have you ever watched a video and realized afterwards that it was actually completely artificially uh, generated? Well, that is one of the biggest challenges, especially for real journalists. And with us now to talk about it is Ali Rida Haji Husseini, CNN's Academy Director. Ali Rida, thank you so much for joining us on thank the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So tell us a little bit first about what the CNN Academy is. Sure. Um, so CNN Academy builds upon a legacy that we've had uh, in CNN ever since really Ted Turner, uh, our founder, which is about empowering that next generation of storytellers, content creators and journalists. So um, CNN Academy in itself was born in Abu Dhabi uh, just a couple of years ago. And since then, we've grown globally. We have programs uh, all around the world. And our focus is helping that next generation to get the skills they need to become effective communicators, effective storytellers, uh, and you know, content creators that can produce uh, content that resonates with a global audience. Well, we did speak briefly with Michael about uh, AI entering into the news space, maybe coming up with fake news or trying to replace writers. Uh, how have you seen that when it comes to, uh, to the news world? Yeah, I mean, listen, it's, it's kind of uh, Dickensian, right? It's, uh, it's a tale of two cities, best of times, worst of times. You know, on, on the one hand, uh, all of us here have this amazing ability to get access to knowledge with a, with a touch of our sort of smartphone. Uh, on the other hand, there is these real risks, right? Deep fakes, um, fake news, uh, all these other things. But AI in, in and of itself isn't the threat, right? It's, it's what you do with it and how you use that technology. Um, so for us and CNN Academy, this year, for example, we focused our entire program on storytelling in the age of AI to help uh, our students and our, that next generation to understand what are the tools that I can use, some of them AI tools, uh, to help me detect sort of deep fakes uh, and to help me better tell that story uh, in this sort of ecosystem that we're living in. Uh, you know, because typically, internet is the place we go to when we want to check facts. But I feel like, especially in the new AI generated content that a lot of websites have, we need a software to fact check the internet a lot of the times uh, because I mean th th there can sometimes uh, AI can sometimes perpetuate news bias. What is your take on this? Yeah, absolutely. And hopefully, um, if you're checking stories, you should check stories on a on a trusted news outlet like <laughs> CNN. And good plug. Good um, plug. But that's that's the thing, right? Trust is very important in our business and what we do. Um, and for us, for example, at CNN, one of the things that we uh, have to maintain is that audience trust. So we, if ever we use an AI generated uh, sort of content, which we're not sort of allowed to do as part of our AI principles, uh, we have to be upfront with the audience. So if we want to use an AI generated piece of content uh, for the purposes of you know, making a point where we're covering AI, we have to be upfront, we have to label it, uh, and we have to you know, make sure the audience knows that it's AI generated. Uh, but really it's, it's raising that media literacy uh, helping users of content, uh, students, young people, old people understand what's out there, uh, what is AI doing, and what you can do to help spot um, sort of content that's generated by AI. And sometimes maybe it's uh, you know it has nefarious intentions behind it. All right. So you're at a brunch, you're at a dinner party, yeah. And somebody comes up to you and they ask you what you're doing. What would be the top three things that you would say to say a neophyte to explain? These are the things you should look out for to determine if something is AI generated. So um, who was the source of that piece of content? Who initially put it out? Um, the sourcing is very important. If it's like, oh, it was shared with me on WhatsApp multiple times, well, that already is a bit of a red flag. Um, uh, sometimes uh, there's tools out there right now that uh, change audio, for example, and you know they take uh, an actual video uh, and, and it, they change the audio of it. You could you know detect around the lips. Sometimes you could see that um, it, it's, it, it doesn't really sync. Um, and then there are AI tools that we use uh, that help us fight AI disinformation and misinformation. Uh, so you run that through it. And if you think about it, I mean, old school journalism, what is that about? I mean, I have to tell you, you're, 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 you're my teacher here, but it's all about you know, taking a look at something and, and fact checking it. Uh, was this video taken where it says it was taken? Uh, if it's a video from you know, January in Montreal, but the sun is shining and people are walking in shorts, well, that's probably not January in Montreal because we know it's 
that's not the weather pattern there. So, um, and if it says that it's in Dubai, but you know, there's the Empire State Building in the shot, well, then it's probably not Dubai and it's probably New York City. So there are things that every consumer of media today needs to sort of up the game uh, and, and sort of uh, brush up on uh, in order for them to be effective uh, sort of uh, tools against what we're saying. But AI is also a very good thing. Mm -hmm. I also don't want us to just focus on the bad things. AI can also, um, uh, and, and this is what we're doing with our program in CNN Academy. I was just going to yeah. ask, like, how are you using AI within your academy to empower like the next generation of journalists? Like, how, how are you using it in a positive way? So there, there are lots of positive things that we're doing with it. There's, uh, there's some time-consuming tasks that any newsroom or any organization, uh, you know, has to carry out. That AI can come in and and sort of make that much easier and much quicker. Um, there's also ways that um, AI helps us reach uh, a new audience, a different audience. The audience, our content is in English, for example. But thanks to AI, you could translate that, uh, transcribe that much. Uh, much quicker and much more effectively uh, and reach that audience that maybe until now we didn't have access to. Okay. Here's my, my question. It might be a bit of a serious question for this show, but um, uh, the origin of AI. We know it's uh, open AI. We know that there is somebody who developed this. Um, what about now? Is the technology standalone or could somebody potentially who's in control of these AI tools uh, affect them across platforms? So, I mean, I think there's, there's um, what you're seeing right now, there's multiple different companies where we're gonna open AI is one of them, obviously. I mean, Google's out there, Anthropic's is out there. So the, there are multiple different companies who are putting out different models, different use cases. Uh, we're very lucky to be living in the UAE because the UAE is at the forefront of the AI uh, sort of race with what, what's going on in, in Abu Dhabi, uh, with the sort of investments that are there, the research that's taking place. So uh, again, it's the best of times because, and especially it's the best of times for us here because because we are living at this sort of forefront, uh, you know, frontier uh, 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 ecosystem, um, and you know, I think the competition amongst these companies is actually a good thing for the consumer because, you know, as they compete, uh, they're going to make make sure that product resonates with us a bit more, that helps our life uh, a bit more. And what we're doing also at Academy is we're, we run students through this training for the first couple of weeks. We give them storytelling, we give them ethics in journalism, we give them mobile journalism. Uh, and then in December, we run the CNN Academy Newsroom Simulation, which we're all invited to come and check out, uh, where we bring all our students from all around the world. We're, we're talking about 150 students, 45 of, of whom are from the UAE cohort. Uh, and we run them through a simulated breaking news environment uh, with AI at the heart of it. Uh, so they have to detect um, if things that are, you know, being presented to them is manipulated media, um, and they have to use the AI tools that we, we train them with to, you know, better and more effectively tell their stories. Be because you have a lot of young people coming into the program, uh, starting at the academy, what's the, what are their feelings about the use of AI? Are they kind of okay with it when it comes to news presentation, or do they have, say, more concerns than we might as? Um, I'm going to put you in my category as an older generation. <laughs> um, I think, I mean, I'm always uh, amazed by how uh, much further young people are um, in, in their sort of uh, understanding of tech and trends and their um, ease of uh, adaptation of all of that. Uh, so I think it's almost second nature to them uh, when, when it's uh, something new and different. Uh, and they're not afraid to try it out. Um, our role, I think, is to really help them understand that being that trusted source of news and information, and if you're trying to break into this industry uh, and work for an organization like CNN, it's not only uh, you know necessary for you to know how to create that really good viral video that's gonna go viral on TikTok or any other platform, but how do you ensure that you're a trusted source, uh, you're accountable to your audience, you're transparent with your audience. Um, and for us, our challenge is to do that, you know, because they come to us already with so much a much better understanding of, of content, of how content should be consumed, should be distributed on these different platforms. What we have to do is to you know, present them with those guardrails on how you can effectively do this while remaining you know, ethical and true to the mission, which is helping you know, tell the stories of, of people all around the world uh, uh, in a way that resonates with them. I think ultimately it all just boils down to reputation, credibility, and Absolutely. journalistic integrity. Ali Reza, thank you so much for joining us here on the show. That was some fantastic advice that you shared with us.
pleasure. Thank you. Amy, I believe you have a DXB in 60 quiz. Yes, we do indeed. Michael, we want to get to know you a little bit better. So I've got some quick fire questions for you to be done in 60 seconds. Are you ready? I'm ready. 60 seconds on the clock. Influencers or journalists? Journalists. <laughs> Traditional media or mixed? Mixed. Okay. If you could cover any news story, past, present, or future, what would it be? I know my audience. I would say the the founding of the UAE, Fantastic. December second. Very interesting. If you could witness any historical event, what would it be? I would say something that would have to do with back in the day when Lebanon was the Paris of the Middle East. Very interesting. Favorite place to wind down after a stressful day? The Main. Good choice. Favorite restaurant in Dubai? Ditto. <laughs> the Main. Your biggest inspiration? I think it would have to be my children. Seeing how they're able to navigate the world today, they're 28, they're twins, um, and what they're doing, they're back home in Toronto. My wife and I are here. They're living their best lives and they're doing it so well and they are an inspiration. Fantastic. Last question. Why Dubai? So Dubai is, it wasn't necessarily why it was Dubai. It was more about this was the place where I think we needed to be if we were going to be who we wanted to become. We were, this was more than 20 years ago. I was much younger, obviously. And we thought, where could we be the best versions of ourselves? Well, and Dubai was the answer. Absolutely. Michael, it's always a pleasure to have you on. Thank, thank you. you so much for being with us. And Ali Riba, thank you for being here as well. All right, while we say goodbye to our guests, it's not over yet because we still have a performance from A Times Two. But before we get to that, let's hear a little word from them. Hey guys, we're A Times Two. We actually met at church. Yeah. We were just volunteering and we found out we had the same name. We Some, friends. Yeah, somehow became friends and we just stuck together ever since. Abby and Abby. Abby and Abby. We are into funk and reggae and a little bit of pop, but all around fun. We can't wait to perform tonight. So we'll see you later.